Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. And welcome back to another edition of Issues in Education. Mondays, during the Noon Report, we give you a front row seat to all that's happening inside the classroom with Dr. Ralph Kerr at the Teaching and Learning Institute. Well, Ralph, uh, here we are. The new year is upon us. I don't know how long I can say Happy New Year to you (laughs) without that getting weird, but I'll say Happy New Year, Ralph Kerr. Well, you can certainly say that because this is the first time we've uh, broadcast since the new year started. There Happy you new go. Year to you and all the listeners. Well, hey, the kiddos have had about a week uh, to, to reacclimate. I always hated that first week in January. Uh, reacclimate after the long Christmas break. I um, wanted to ask you, since you mentioned it's our first show of 2023, what you think of the main issues and challenges facing our public schools this year will be. Well, there are a ton of them, but I'll just mention the top four in my mind. One is still trying to uh, deal educationally with the student learning loss that occurred during the pandemic. I mean, teachers are really struggling with that. Secondly, I'd mentioned the politics in education. There's not supposed to be any of that, but uh, unfortunately there is issues of the transgender, the critical race theory still is poking its head up. And then thirdly, this whole issue with the combination we hear now about COVID, flu, and then the younger children, RSV, schools are really struggling with that. And then fourthly, The issue of shortages, not only teacher shortages, bus driver shortages, but substitute teacher shortages as well. So I'll take those as my top four for 2023. And we'll tear those issues apart in the coming weeks ahead. But first, let's talk about maybe one of those. That's the health concerns. Uh, Last week, Pennsylvania's largest school district imposed a mask rule for the next two weeks. Students in Philadelphia, students and teachers will have to wear a mask at least for the next two weeks. Ralph, do you think that if we see an uptick in flu, RSV, COVID, that other districts will follow suit? Unless it's mandated by the states, I can't see school districts really going back to that again. I have no problem with people who want to wear a mask, wear a mask, but to push those mandates on children and staff again, I'm very concerned about. I don't know how you say, well, we'll put it in for two weeks and see what happens. Yeah. It seems to me either it's a good thing or it's not. Uh, they don't go on as easy the second time. (laughs) So we'll see how that goes in Philadelphia. While we're in Pennsylvania, Ralph, you know, you get a lot of questions all the time about what I need to do to run for school board. And you're based in Houghton, New York. So a lot lot of our listeners in Pennsylvania say, hey, what if I want to run for school board? Is that something you can assist with in the Keystone State? Yes, it absolutely is. In fact, over the vacation period, I, I had a question related to that from somebody in Pennsylvania. And we're certainly willing and able able to provide assistance to anybody that's interested in Pennsylvania in running for the school board as well as New York. And we'll give the website for how you can do that at the end, but let's talk more issues in education. Hillsdale College is a wonderful institution, and the president of that school wrote an article last year on the state of our public schools. would love to get your thoughts on this, Ralph, as we talk about how much money is spent in public education. He points out that the a number of administration jobs has grown almost 90% in 20 years, while student enrollment has grown by less than 9% during that same time period. Begs the question, why are there so many administrative jobs in public education today? Well, that's a really good question. In many of the smaller school districts, there aren't that many more administrators than there used to be. It seems to be the large districts. But here's the situation. The feds and the state governments are requiring more programs, and that just requires more administrators. Also, another thing is that student behavior, unfortunately, is in many places just out of control, and it just requires more adults in the room to help take care of that. The other thing is, and lots of people don't know this, but in at least in New York, there is a legal requirement that every school 
have a principle. All right. And then finally, Ralph, before we let you go, I know you'll be watching tomorrow, January 10th, as Governor Hochul delivers her State of the State speech. A lot of it will have to do with funding for public schools. One of the things that she's under pressure from the, the Democratic supermajority in the in the Assembly and the Senate is to provide free breakfast and lunch at school. The argument is that one in seven children in New York go hungry, and a lot of for a lot of these kids, it's the only meal they will receive. Can the state afford to do this, provide free breakfast and lunch at school? Well, you know, they did that, and I think to their credit, during the pandemic. And it is a shame that there are one in seven children go hungry every day. So I think that they can certainly afford to do it, not by increasing the budget, but if the uh, senators and the assembly people are so concerned about it, then how about if they give up a few of their earmarks and use that money to help provide food for hungry children. All right. Maybe a little bit of that 32% pay raise as well. I don't know, but I digress. I had to get in that somewhere. Uh, Hey, we we get a lot of questions. Hey, how can I run for my school board? Whether you live in the great state of New York or the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Ralph, you have a wonderful website where you can point people in the right direction. What is that, sir? Thank you, Bob. It's simply whyrun.org. Why run? Dot org.